In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use MainStage to import a pre-recorded audio track and use it for your live performance. We're going to be working with a drum track in this case, one that we created previously in Logic Pro. Um, and you can see that video if you want a demonstration on how to create the drum track. Um, this doesn't have to be a drum track. We could use any backing tracks that we wanted for this purpose. But let's jump into this. I'm going to start. I've got MainStage open, and I'm going to create a new concert using the guitar amp and it tells me that it won't make any audio till we adjust the master volume as usual um, for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to take this channel strip and disable the input this of course is not something you'd normally do I'm doing this uh, only because we'll get feedback as I'm doing the recording but I'm going to bring master volume up for our purposes later on. And now I'm going to go over to the layout mode. And here in the layout mode, I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff down at the bottom. I'm laying this out in a very simple fashion. You may have a very different idea on how you want to lay it out, but uh, this will give you the example of what you need to make it work. So we'll delete those. And then we're going to bring some new things in, starting with the selector. We will bring that guy in, and then up at the top left, I'm going to change the view from being patches and sets to patch names or markers. Next, I am going to grab the parameter text, and I'm going to make this guy a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to change on the left under display I'm gonna change this from being parameter comma value to just value and then selecting this guy command D to duplicate I'm gonna create a second one of those I'm gonna grab this progress indicator add that in and again with this selected I'm gonna change my parameter slash value whoops not to parameter to value and that should take care of this for us uh, one more thing we're gonna add we're gonna go to shelf controls and grab a foot switch put that guy in here and that takes care of our layout we're now gonna move over to the edit mode I'm gonna shrink my window down a little bit you can see here on my desktop I have hobo.aif. Again, this is the uh, drum track that we created using Logic Pro. I'm going to drag that into my channel strip area and let it go. We get a new channel strip with the input type of playback. And if I click that playback, we see the playback control. And you can see the waveform of the drum track. You can see that it says count four, then intro, and if we slide over, verse. So these are the marker regions that we had created in Logic Pro. The one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this sync, I'm going to turn it on, and then we will close that window for now. Next thing I'm going to do is start mapping the controls we just put on the screen. So I select what currently says Brit and Clean, and I'm gonna say playback and hobo. And you'll see now that those sections of the song appear here in this window. In the next window, I'm gonna select hobo, uh, playback, status, and current marker name. So to just to be clear on exactly what I'm doing, when I select the uh, parameter display, this hobo that I'm selecting is actually a reference to this channel strip that's called hobo. It's called hobo because that was the name of the, uh, the audio file that we dragged into it. So we worked from there. We selected playback. Playback then refers to the playback control inside of this channel strip. And finally, the status is uh, just what we selected it to be, current marker name. On the other side, we're going to select the other display and we're going to follow the same path hobo one playback status and upcoming marker name so 
Again, if we look on the left, you can see we currently have intro selected. So that's what you see as the current, uh, uh, the current marker. And the next marker is verse showing up over here as the next marker. So these things will be updated while the uh, drum track is playing so we can tell where we are in the song and what's coming next. Now we're gonna select this clock display. Again, select Hobo, Playback, Status, and Time to Next Marker. Now you note this displays in, uh, this is the number of measures and the number of beats. Um, you can also have that display in seconds by time to next marker in seconds. I prefer the measures and beats. And then finally for the foot pedal, we're going to select the foot pedal, hobo, playback, transport, and this time we're going to select play stop from start. Um, this will actually activate the playback, so when we press it down we should start getting our audio playing back. And you can see, again, that the left display is showing us all of the possible uh, sections of the song. The current section is here, the next section coming up, and how long till we get there. So four measures, three measures, two measures, one measure, and we'll be into the bridge now. So that's how that works. Um, one more thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to Brit and Clean. We're going to rename that Hobo since that was the name of our song. And having done all this mapping of the events, I'm going to now duplicate this Hobo. I'm going to press Command D while it's selected and I get another Hobo. This is going to be to create another song and I don't want that song to have the same name. So we'll call it Zebra. Now at present, Hobo and Zebra are actually exactly the same song. They're using the same audio track. So um, selecting Zebra, I'm going to change the audio track that I use. Again, I'm going to come over here to playback, open that up. And this cog in the playback window, select it and select open file. And here on my desktop, you can see I have another audio file called Zebra. I open that, save it, and now we have our two different songs, both with the correct uh, mappings to all of the items in here. Again, there's a lot of different ways you can lay this out and a lot of different things you can do. I didn't talk about how to map this hardware control, this foot pedal, to an actual piece of hardware that you may have. Um, I do have another video in which I describe how to map your hardware to main stage. So take a look at that if you are curious about that. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as quickly as I can. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day. Cheers.